Praise God. So t- today, um, let's study the word of the Lord and let me share with you um, a very strong passage from the Bible, a very familiar passage. And uh, as we study this word, if my people, who are the people of God? The Bible is very clear that God intended his will to be displayed, his ways to be followed, and his word to be obeyed. And as we come to the Lord's presence, as we gather, as we seek him, you know, it is his will for his people to grow. It is his will for his people to learn, understand, and experience more of him every single day of our lives. It is God's will for us to depend on him all the time. Amen? Not once in a while, not once a week or once a month, but every single moment, especially that there are so many pressures and challenges and struggles in our lives. And that's why I would like to share this with you. In the book of Second Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14, if my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and heal their land. How many of you, you are familiar with that verse? Amen. It's a very, very popular, powerful a word from the word of God. Amen. Let's bow our heads. Let's pray. Holy Spirit, we thank you for we have this great opportunity to come. And we ask you to be our teacher. Guide us and help us to learn and understand something about this passage. And we pray, God, as we open up our hearts unto you, may our hearts be receptive of the eternal, incorruptible words of God and continue to change us continue to transform us for thy glory. Father, we thank you. Bless everyone and let your strength and peace and comfort be upon us all. This we pray in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. The world needs revival. The church needs revival. Philippines needs revival. America needs revival. During the time of King Solomon, when he built that temple, he prayed to the God of heaven, and he asked for the Lord's blessing, protection, power, and so many things. And God told him, I will, I will do things that you have cried out for me, but... If my people, if something happened, if the people of God turned away from God, if the people of God did not listen to God anymore, if the people of God disobeyed the words of God anymore, then there will be a big hindrance. There will be a big and great obstacles in the lives of the people of God. But God gave him the King Solomon a great assurance if the people of God will realize and acknowledge that the sin that they have committed before God become a stumbling block for them in order for them not to receive the blessings of God in their lives. There must be the church, or I mean the people of God, do something. They have to do something. And this is what God told them. If my people, if my people, if my people who are called by my name, see the people of God are calling the name of God. The problem in our generation, we call so many names of God. And sometimes in our generation, money becomes the name of many gods. 
And sometimes career become the names of many gods. And sometimes so many things about materialistic things, about worldly things become the names of many gods. And people are now having some obscurity in understanding the will and, and, and the ways and, and the words of God. But the, the Bible says it's very clear that we need to seek God. And the Bible says that if the people of God disobey, the Lord if the people of God run away from God there is always a great chance for them to return because God is a God of another chance God is a God of giving another chance for his people who run away see the good thing about God God is a God who is always giving us another opportunity amen the Bible, is very, the Bible says, If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek and turn. See, if my people, if we are the people of God, we need to realize and understand our covenant before God was established not according to our own righteousness, not according to our own goodness, not according to our own understanding, but according to God's will, according to His ways, according to His perspectives, according to His own will. And that's the reason why it was established not only during the time of Solomon, but it was strengthened during the time of Jesus. That's why we have a new covenant, new testament. It was strengthened. It was empowered. And that's the reason why we are no longer under curse, but under the blessings of God. If my people, people who called upon God, people who bow down before the Lord, people who seek God, people who entrusted their lives to God. And the Bible says, if my people who are called by my name. So if you are the people of God, you need to call the name of God. And Acts chapter 4 verse 12, there is only one name given under heaven whereby man can be saved. Whereby every knee will bow and every tongue will confess. Amen. And that name is above every name. And his name is everlasting. His name is the Alpha and the Omega. The first and the last. The King of kings and the Lord of lords. He is Jesus. Hallelujah. And he said, Hallelujah. I am the one coming very soon. You need to be ready. You need to be prepared. Our hearts, our spirit, everything that is within us. If my people which are called by my name. Amen. And we have some responsibilities. The Bible says, to humble themselves. He's talking about humility. If my people, the reason why so many things, so many tragedies came in the lives of the old covenant people is because every time they received so many blessings, their eyes were blinded with their own blessings. Their eyes were blinded with so many material things. Their eyes were blinded with so many wealth when they have some success in one part of their lives the tendency was they will turn away from god as if they were the one who made themselves successful instead instead of of bringing glory to god they bring glory to themselves they magnify themselves instead of magnifying god the bible says we need to humble ourselves the point is this, no matter what kind of level of achievement you achieve in life, you need to go back to the one who gave you so many blessings. Don't just look to the one, look, don't just look to the blessings, but look to the one who gives us the blessings. Amen. Hallelujah. There are so many people, they wanted the hands of God, only the hands of God but not the totality of God. The Bible says we need to humble ourselves. We need to be 
humble before God. We need to, to bow before the Lord. We need to acknowledge Him in our lives. Humble yourself before God. You can say, hallelujah, oh, I've been a Christian for many years. I think I am humble. And if you have that kind of mindset, the more you need to humble yourself before God. Amen. Because maybe you have a problem. But you have to understand, humble ourselves before the Lord. And then the other one is to pray. Don't raise your hand. How many times, how, how many of us here, before you get out of your house, you pray? Maybe you pray, Lord, thank you, I'm alive. I mean, the word, if you're going to study that, you know, it's not just thanking God. You know, you, you are praying. You are pouring out your heart. In other words, you are so hungry for God. You love to talk with Him. It's not just, Lord, bless me. Lord, me. Lord, me again. And me more. And there are times you pray, me, mine, I. When... God told him, King Solomon, when my people pray, we need to pray, we need to pour out our heart to God. We need to give time to God. Amen. We need to give time to God. And the Bible says we need to seek. Seek Him. We need to seek the Lord. Amen. We need to seek God, His face. So the word seeking is very strong word. When you lost something and that something is very important to you, I believe you are willing to turn upside down everything inside your house just to look for that thing. Why? Because it's important. The point is this. Is God important to all of us? Uh, there are some single, they are really, you know, on fire, seeking the face of, you know what I mean. And they're willing to give time, and energy, everything, just to seek someone that is so important to them. How about God? God is just waiting for you. Seek my face. When we talk about seek my face, you can't see really the face of God. It's, it's, it's a figure of speech that speaks about who God is. It's the totality of who God is. Those who are looking for a partner, most of them, maybe not all, but most of them, they always seek the face. Is she beautiful? or a little bit, or whatever. We always depend on the physical realm. And that's why in order for us to understand, you know, the principles of God, God is telling us to seek the face of God. I tell you, God is beautiful. Hello, are you with me? God is an awesome God. God is a wonderful God. Amen. And then turn from their wicked ways. Why you need to turn? Why the turn from their wicked ways was the last one? Because once you understood, once you learned something that God is a holy God, that, that God is a righteous God, you will be ashamed of yourself. You will see yourself nothing in the presence of God. But that presence will give you that kind of motivation to need to be near more in the presence of God not to run away but be because you need more of him more of his goodness more of his presence turn from their wicked ways there is a greater chance praise God to say sorry or confess your sin or renounce all the things that hinders your relationship with God all our wicked ways Amen? All our wicked ways. And these are four responsibilities of God's people. 
our humility, our prayer life, our seeking the Lord's face, seeking God's face, I mean, and, and turning from all our wicked ways. So where we are talking about here, we're talking about this is being desperate in the presence of God. And desperate is not something that is negative, all right? This is about being desperate for God. How many of you are desperate because of many problems in life? There are people, they're desperate, they kill themselves. They're desperate, you know, they, in a negative way, they destroy their lives. But here, when you humble yourself and, and pray and seek God and turn from their wicked ways, that is a kind of desperation. It speaks about your brokenness unto God. It speaks about, God, I have nothing without you, Lord. I can do nothing apart from you. I cannot accomplish anything apart from you. I've been through a lot and that's the reason why I am very desperate not of the things of this world. I am desperate of your presence because you are everything in my life. Amen. Hallelujah. This is about being desperate for God. There, there is an emptiness and an expectation to be filled. And that's why if you are desperate, there's brokenness, there's emptiness in our hearts. You are hungry, you are thirsty for, for, for more of God. And that's the reason why King Solomon, when he asked that, God told him this and that. Because emptiness is the prerequisite for desperation. Because if you have everything, are you desperate? No. And sometimes you are relaxed. If you have all the money, are you going to ask God? Maybe you're going to ask God for more money. If you have lots of things, are you desperate for God to seek God? Are you, going to, are you desperate for God to sacrifice, to, to, to give, to, to, to pour out your heart before God, to, to pray? For more, not only two minutes, not only three minutes. You know, God, when we pray, don't consider God as fast food restaurant. Okay. Emptiness is the prerequisite for desperation. And desperation is the condition that exists when a recognized need is present. There are so many needs, but there is only one need that you really need. And He is the totality of everything. He is God. Amen. Let's give the Lord a clap of praise. Being desperate, humble yourselves, seek, your, seek His face, pray, and turn from your wicked ways. This is showing extreme courage, especially of actions courageously undertaken as a last resort. It, it, in other words, you, you come up to, to that situation. It's it like you are in the cul-de-sac. It's at the end of the edge and there's no way out but to be in the presence of God. I mean, that's it. this is it, Lord. In other words, desperate people do not care what anyone thinks. They don't care what other people will say. If you're desperate for God, you don't care what other people will say against you. Because you are desperate for God, you keep looking for God. They do not care what anyone says. They will go where no one else will go. They will go further. They will pray further. They will seek God further. They won't let anything stop them. They, want any, they, they don't allow anybody to stop them. They will do desperate things. Desperation, as I said, is not a bad thing. From a divine and biblical perspective, there are many blessings and even promises of God that cannot be obtained apart from being desperate. You need to be desperate for God by humility, His prayer, seeking the pace of God, and turning from our wicked ways. Amen. So, worldliness is eating up so many believers nowadays. When we talk about worldliness, worldliness is anything that decreases your hunger for God. Worldliness. 
Don't you know if you spend more time in video games, you are worldly? If you are spending time in video games than God? Anything that decreases your hunger for God is worldliness. And worldliness is not from God. Do not get filled with something else but God. Amen. 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 Come on, shout your praise to Jesus. The world is looking for fulfillment in every area of their lives. Fulfillment, when we talk about fulfillment, fulfillment being filled to the fullest. And there are so many people, oh, I have a house, I have cars, I have a husband, I have wife, I have children, I have everything, then I am fulfilled. Wrong. If your fulfillment based on what you have, you are in a wrong direction. If your fulfillment is based on God, then you are in the right direction. Why? Because the Bible says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. In other words, God has no, God is not neglecting your needs. God is not neglecting our physical and material needs. God really wanted and, had, and he is more than able to give whatever we need. But we thank God. The need that we really need is no other than but God who is the source of everything. Hallelujah. He is the fulfillment of everything. More than jobs, more than career, more than business, more than families, more than habits, more than friendships. The only place to find true fulfillment is in the presence of God. That's why God told him, if my people which are called by my name and, 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 and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. You know, sometimes we become desperate because of our trials. And Peter, one of the disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ, experienced many trials. He denied the Lord Jesus Christ, not only once, but thrice. Amen? And there are so many temptations, even us today. There are so many temptations as a follower of Jesus. And you know, the good thing about Peter, as a result of his trials and temptation, he, he wrote First Peter. And in First Peter, he gives several reasons for trials and as one who suffered so much the holy spirit uses his his uh, uh the holy spirit uses his his situation you know in order for him to be comforted and to be strengthened by god and 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 he said if you will look in first peter chapter one and first peter chapter four praise god that you know in order for us to to, to have that kind of heart is to have that hunger for the Lord. And the reason why there are so many trials is because to build up our faith, to strengthen our inner being, and, and to purify our lives, and, and to bring glory to the living God. And that's the reason why if my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. See the response of God. The response of God, if we are desperate for God's presence and realize that, you know, we need to humble ourselves, we need to pray before God, we need to seek God, we need to turn ourselves from all of our wicked ways, two responses. The Bible says, then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and heal their land. So try to meditate these three things. God said, I will. I will. I will. It is His will. Amen? Not anybody's will, but His will. I will hear. Our God is a listening God. He's not a deaf God. He is a listening God. There are so many people today, they can listen. They, they, there's no problem with their ears, but you know, when, when somebody called them as if they are as if their ears are not functioning well. Hello, are you with me? Especially when the wife is calling, Hey, honey, honey. You know what I'm talking. Well, I will hear. God is a listening God. Hello, are you with me? So that's why you don't need to be a prey. You don't need to run away. Because our God is a listening God. 
He is not watching from the distance. You can experience Him through your prayer. Because our God is a listening God. I will hear. I will hear from heaven. See, the good thing about God, God is powerful and He can hear your words. Amen? But how about if you are standing and you are not talking to God, you know? So you have to talk. You have to, to, to speak. You have to open your mouth. Because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So that's why if you have lots of things inside of your heart, problems, trust, and, 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 and all kinds of things going on inside of you, you have to talk. You have to speak. You have to let it go. Amen? You have to let God know. I will hear. I, I, I'm listening. Amen? Do you know anybody, you know that th their ears are, there's, there's no problem with their ears, but it, it seems they are not listening to you? It's very irritable or oh, irritating, I mean. I, I will hear. God is a listening God. The, the, the other one is, I will forgive. God is a forgiving God. That's a good thing. When, when you humble yourself, when you pray, when you seek, when you turn from all your wicked ways, God will forgive. He will forgive our sin. That's why you don't need to condemn yourself and, and, and dwell from all kinds of guilt because of what happened in your life or because of your past or mistakes or shortcomings. God knows our, our failures. God knows our shortcomings. God knows that we're not God and we are, you know, vulnerable from all kinds of temptation and one day we will fall from 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 one sin to another but the good thing about god when, when you humble yourself when, when you call upon him when you seek him when you pray when you turn from your wicked ways god is not just listening god is more than willing to forgive you he is willing to forgive your sin hallelujah he is willing to forgive your sin. He is a forgiving God. There are people, they, they don't like to forgive you. There are people, they will keep in their hearts all their grudges and bitterness and, 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 and unforgiveness towards you. But when you come to the Lord, when you humble yourself, when you, when you become empty and, and, and broken before God, when you desperately seeking God out of that situation and, and you turn from all your wicked ways, the Bible says, Son, I am listening to you. Son, I am here for you and I am willing to forgive you. I don't care how many sins you have committed. I don't care how many, how many mistakes you have committed if you humble yourself if you pray if you seek if you turn from your wicked ways then I will forgive you hallelujah God is a forgiving God and not only he is a forgiving God he is our healing one I will hear I will forgive and I will heal so many today there are so many people that are sick they are wounded they are emotionally wounded inside they are physically sick there are so many things going on in their lives the bible says if my people will humble if my people will pray if my people will seek my face if my people turn from their wicked ways. I will not only listen to them. I will do something to them. I will forgive their sin. Then I will heal their land. Then I will heal whatever wounds, whatever sickness, whatever diseases. He is the God who is the same yesterday and today and forever. He is the God who never changes. He is the God who said, I will do great things in your life. I will do wonderful things in your life. If you will humble yourself, if you will seek my face, if you will pray and turn from, my, from your wicked ways. Hallelujah. Come on, church. God gave Solomon a great assurance. I know 
my people are not perfect. They made mistakes. And they're going to make, mis make mistakes. Now I'm giving you a, this assurance, Solomon. But they, ha they, 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 they have responsibilities. Don't let the spirit of pride and arrogance running away and, and, and all kinds of negative, negative things, you know, live in their hearts. But instead, they need to humble themselves. They need to, to pray. They need to seek me. They need to turn from all their wicked ways. Then I will hear. I will forgive. See, the problem sometimes, you know, we, we'll have to humble ourselves. Lord, hallelujah, Lord. It's prayer meeting again, Lord God. Lord, I humble myself, Lord. And then you, sometimes you untug your ulo here in the, in the cement, you know. Lord, just I humble myself, Lord. Then you pray, you pray, you pray. Lord, bless me, bless, bless I, bless mine, bless, bless everything about me, Lord. Then you seek. Lord, seek, I seek promotion. I seek, I seek, I, I seek uh, favor. I seek, I seek. <laughs> then the last one is turn from your wicked ways. And there are times, you know, if you are a military, because that is 180 degrees, right? Like this. But there are times, there are so many people, you know, they turn like this. Oh, that's why you ended up the same thing. You turn from your... And sometimes, yeah, every Sunday you turn like this. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, then the rest goes on and on. The Bible says when you turn from your wicked ways, no turning back. <laughs> Hello, are you with me? No turning back. Tell to your neighbor, no turning back. Turn from your wicked ways. The Bible says, the response of God demonstrates several things. When he said, I will hear, I will forgive, and I will heal. It demonstrates God has come to meet us where we are. At your lowest point. At your desperate situation. Church, in the routine of your life and in the crisis of your life, God is near to you. Hello, are you with me? He is your hope in the midst of all that happens in your life. God the, is your refuge. He is your, your tower. He is your, your strong tower. He is your shepherd. In the midst of all that happens in our lives. God, God, the good thing about this is God places himself There's in that situation so that you may experience his salvation. You may experience his forgiveness, his, his comfort, his, his, his new, newness, his love, and his passion for you. That response from God demonstrate God has come to meet us where we are. See, the good thing about God, when you call God, God will not send a proxy. God will meet you where you are. The second one, the demonstra the demonstrate God accepts us just as we are. There is a transformation that takes place in the presence of God. What has been isn't what, what always has, has to be. The despair and helplessness melts away in the presence of God with hope and with courage. The problems that comfort our lives become our possibilities, becomes our opportunities. The fear that sometimes grips us melts into fortitude in the presence of God. And the filth of sin is washed away in the hope found in the very presence of the living God. Because God accepts us just as we are. And that's why you can present yourself completely before God. You don't need to be afraid. And the third response, God will save anyone who will call. 
anyone. So it doesn't matter the color, it doesn't matter the status in life, it doesn't matter about our religious background or about our ideology or about our perspective in life. The Bible says God will save anyone who will call. Anyone who will call. God is the respecter of person. Amen? So how many of us live in daily torment, daily discouragement, pressures in life, leaving us though we have no hope when all we have to do is to call upon God, call upon Jesus and thus be delivered. God's desire is to save us. God's desire is to forgive us. God's desire is to heal us. God's desire is to make us whole. To give us reason for hope. To give us reason to live. To give us reason to, to, to move and to continue. And, and to trust Him all day long. Every single day of our lives. He is also our hope. Not only for tomorrow, even right now. Amen? And that's why the Bible says in the, in the, in the book of Isaiah chapter 55. <clears throat> Seek the Lord. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Why? Is he going somewhere else? There will be a time of giving opportunities and possibilities. But there will be a time of judgment. And that's what he's talking about. Call upon him while he is near. While there is still a chance. Tomorrow may be too late. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Let him return to the Lord and he will have mercy on him and to our God for he will abundantly pardon. He will pardon us. He will, he will forgive us abundantly overflowing mercy and grace of God. You can count all your sins but God can forgive all our sins. Because his pardon is abundant. His forgiveness is overflowing. Amen? And that's why the Bible says, If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face, then I will hear from heaven and forgive their sin and heal their land. We as a church, as a family, we represent also this nation. It's good to humble ourselves before God. Since there's so many things going on in this nation, the judgment of God is just around the corner. The people of God must humble themselves and seek the Lord's divine intervention. That this nation will experience a new wave of revival. That this nation will be awakened and to see that there is still hope in the Lord. That there is still great future for those people who will seek and humble themselves and pray before God and turn from their wicked ways. Because the God whom we are serving is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He can hear, He can forgive, and He can heal. Amen? Praise God. Let's the Lord. Hallelujah. Shall we all stand right now in the presence of God?